whenever I am working on the bike, I do like to be able to roll it around the garage. <clears throat> so I'm using this great Venom roll around stand. And to make it easier to get up on the center stand, I just glued a couple of pieces of wood together, make a shallow ramp that lifts the bike in enough that it's not nearly as hard to get up on the stand. And now, I can just roll the bike around without any difficulty at all. Really makes it nice. So the first step for taking the wheel off is to take the brake calipers off. And those are these two bolts here. And they are T45s, I believe. And these should not be terribly tight. We will take those off on both sides. And then I'm gonna wiggle the caliper and just slide it out and try to get it past the wheel. And that will then let these come out. And then when the wheel comes off, it'll just slide forward. We're also going to take the front fender off. This, one, this bolt's already been snapped off in a previous uh, escapade, but we're gonna take those four bolts off, take the fender off, and then the front wheel should slide out. So once you get these bolts out, you can just wiggle this out of here, and now it's a good time to check the brake pads as well. And if you can see here, the pads are they're about half worn. There's still quite a bit of material here. I've got almost 10,000 miles on these, but they're getting low enough that I'm probably going to order another set of brake pads to have on hand. And the next time I do a front tire change, I'll probably be ready to do those as well. One of the things that I like to do is try to keep track of where all the nuts and bolts go. And so to keep it easy to remember, a lot of times I'll just screw these right back in where they go. And that way I can't forget which bolts go where. Next, we'll remove the four bolts for the front fender and take that off just to make it easier to get the tire out. Next, we need to jack the front wheel up so I've got the jack right at the very front edge of the sump. And now we can jack the bike up and get the front tire off the ground. The next step is to loosen the pinch bolt. And that is also a T45. I found this great axle nut tool on eBay, or you can find it on Amazon. It's four different sizes of axle nut, and the ends are set up for a half inch breaker bar. And so this bike is a 22 millimeter, and it just slides right in. Okay, so we are back on day two of our front wheel bearing debacle and I'll see whether we can show you what's going on. So this wheel bearing came apart um, and that is the one that is the problem and what has happened is apparently the bearing has welded itself to the axle shaft. So I can't get this out. Um, I've got the, got, the, got the part loose over here so the threads are okay. That bearing appears to be in good shape because the dust boot is still in place. But regardless of how hard I try, I have not been able to get this shaft to slide out of here to get the wheel off. So the next step is going to be to take the entire front A-arm off and take it to a shop. Now, as it turns out, I wanted to replace the ball joint. There's one of them right there, and the other one is way the heck up there. That's the hard part because it is basically in the middle of the motorcycle. <laughs> it is <sighs> here, right? Uh, it's just right smack in the middle of the front of the bike. So the entire front of the motorcycle is gonna have to come apart. That's the project today. 
I've covered this in a previous episode, but it bears repeating, especially on a project of this size. To make sure that I remember where the bolts go, I will just tape each screw or fastener to the bodywork where it goes, and I'll just fold the end over so it's easy to remove. And when I go to put this bike back together, I don't have to remember, is this the long one? Or is this the long one? Because it'll be taped right in its place. So step one is I've got to take both panels off, and that's going to be upper and lower sections. And then we'll see where we are next. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to take the handlebars off. I may have to take the headlight assembly out to get to that upper ball joint. But uh, we're going to start disassembling and go from there. For those of you who have not watched my previous videos, the lower housing has to come off first before you can get to the upper one because there's a bolt right under here that we can't see. So we're going to take these screws out here and then come around to the inside and take these guys. There's one here, one down below, and then there are two underneath. And that'll let us get the bottom part of the fairing off. That'll expose the mounting screws here that'll let us take the top one off. We've got these two bolts off. We'll take this guy off. And then both of these panels will come off. So I have the first piece removed and looks like I've got an oil leak. So anytime you're working on the bike, it's a great time to do a really good inspection and try to figure out what other things you might want to do while you're in there. I'm going to have the whole bike apart. Looks like it may be the cam chain tensioner, but there's definitely a bunch of grunge in here and it's leaking down onto the outside of the engine. So we now have yet another project to add to the list. And here are those two underside bolts. We'll take these guys off, and this piece should come out. So once you have all the screws loose, there's a pin that goes straight up into this bodywork. And just pull that straight down, and out it comes. These are the air intakes for the engine, and we're going to take this screw out and pull this piece out next. So we're going to continue to dig deeper into the bike. I'm going to take the speakers out just so I have a little bit better access. And I think I'm going to take the handlebars off. I'm just loosening those up so I can wiggle those around. What we're trying to do is to get down in here to that, to the ball joint, which is actually under this link here. I don't know whether we can, whether they're even going to be able to see that. Um, but that's where we're headed. So I'm going to take the bars off and take the speakers off and probably have to take the windshield off. And that should let me get the headlight out. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to get into it from there. The speakers are pretty simple. There are just three bolts. There's one here. There's one here. And this one is already loose because that is what was holding on that uh, vent for the air intake. So we're going to take those three bolts off and pull these off on both sides. The speakers also come out with just three bolts. And then on the bottom, on the back, will be a two-wire connector. And that just unclips, and then we can remove the entire speaker housing. With the windshield off, we'll take these two screws out. That'll let us take this plate off. That will let the top of the... GPS unit slide out once we take these bolts out. With the binnacle removed, the next step, I think I'm going to try to pull the instrument cluster out because that's really what we're trying to get into. And that is done with these two bolts, one on each side. On the back side of the GPS housing is a micro switch that tells the system when the windshield is all the way down to protect the GPS. You just pry this tab up, and it pulls right out. Now this can come off too. 
With that removed, we can now get to the last two screws, I'm hoping, to release the instrument cluster. And right down in there is where we're headed. You can see a little, there's, a, there's a cable and a little bit of a triangle. That's not it. We're going one level below that. Okay, so with those final two bolts out, this lifts forward. There is a wire connector here that clips into the back on this side right here. That just pushes out. And now I'm going to disconnect your instrument cluster wiring. I think that may do it. So for the first time, I feel like we're actually making progress. And what we're doing is we're continuing to work our way down. And I just can't quite see it, but it's the way down in there is the upper ball joint. And we're just trying to get access to it any way we can. Next thing I'm going to do is take the handlebars off that I believe is a 22 millimeter nut. And that may just give me access. Wish me luck. So I think the next step is I'm going to release these two bolts on each side, which will let me slide the mirror out. And then I can come through and remove some uh, mounting bolts along through here and maybe take these pieces off. And then that will let me get the headlight out. And with those two bolts out, The mirror assembly just pulls right out. On the throttle side, or the right side of the bike, there's a ground strap that we need to remove. And also this has the built-in antenna. So that wire comes through here and is connected right here. Next, we're going to remove the side panel bodywork. And for that, there's a screw here, and this plastic piece comes with that screw. What you don't see, if you're not careful, is there's another screw behind it. With the mirror off, we can gently loosen these clips. There's going to be a mounting bolt screw here. There's one here. There's one here. And there are two in here. Once that's done, it just unclips and slides forward. To remove the windshield lower surround, we're going to take the two bolts out here. With the two front bolts loose on each side, now we have to get this piece up over this piece. And to do that, there's a little circlip right here. We're going to grab that with a pair of pliers, pull that down, and just lift this up enough to slide the black plastic piece out. Okay, now we're actually getting somewhere. I'm getting pretty excited because we're getting close to getting the headlight out. To do that, we're going to remove these screws here. And then there are C-clips here like we just did on top. That should let that bolt slide out. And this guy, and I think we might actually be there. This one, I think, will just lift up once I get the headlight out. Let's give it a whirl. We've got a headlight connector here that just pulls out. The big one here, I'm going to have to look at this to see how this one unplugs. And we'll unplug that. Take the wiring harness out of the clip, and with luck, this will slide forward. And there we are. So, to remove the handlebars, it's a 27 millimeter socket. We got a pretty good lever on here. I've got the bars turned over so it's against the stop. And it just comes right loose. Okay, so this is the object of our affection right here. There's a plastic cap here, and then there's a nut that holds that upper ball joint in there. It's right.
here. Right there. So that's what we're trying to get off. So now we got to get that plastic cap off of there. And then we should be able to get to that bolt. There we are. So here's our cap. And there's our top nut. So I can get the 21 millimeter socket onto the bolt, but I have no way of getting an extension on there or getting a ratchet handle in there to free that up. I'm not going to have any range of motion, so it looks like I'm going to have to go maybe get a, a box wrench and try that. So it looks like uh, I'm going to be able to get the whole front assembly out today. And having a floor jack that close to my rolling stand, uh, that's balancing the bike in a pretty precarious position. So I just ran a come along strap or tie down strap up to our roof rafter just to have a little more stability, try to keep it from, uh, from rocking around too much as I am trying to get these bolts loose. And hopefully, if that jack would fail, it would keep the whole thing from crashing down to the ground, which would make me very sad. One of the things I want to do is to make sure that I have any potential wires or cables uh, that are going to hold up me getting this, uh, this Hotchkiss front end apart. And I realize the brake lines screw into a mounting screw in the back of that, so I'm going to have to take that off. And I also have the ABS brake sensor wire here. I'm going to have to take that off as well. Good thing I figured that out before I started yanking on that entire assembly. So, holding the ABS sensor wire in place are these little teeny screws. There's three of them. And those are going to be a bugger to get out with the wheel still in place, normally it wouldn't be a big deal, but uh, I can't get the wheel out until I get the assembly off, and I can't get the assembly off until I get the wheel out. So we're gonna try to get those out, and uh, hopefully that will be the last step. So the third screw is behind the bottom edge of the rotor. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. There's a third screw right there, and I simply can't get to it. There's nothing I can do with the tools that I have because it is halfway below the rotor. I'm going to have to take the rotor bolts off and slide that out of the way so I can get to that last bolt. With the brake disc and the ABS ring disconnected, I can now get to that last bolt. To get to this top nut. There's just no way to do it without taking this linkage apart. So I've got the bolts loose. We'll pull it apart and go from there. So now with this link disconnected, I can tie this up out of the way and now I have great access to the top nut. This is what we've been waiting for. <laughs> 